Uh, yes, hello. So the the following topic uh, has a title called uh, Fracture Mechanics Testing of PLA Polymer and uh, one similar uh, material, which is a composite made out of uh, PLA matrix. So uh, this, the following uh, was conducted by uh, myself, okay, Alexa Milovanovic and my colleague from Brno, from Institute of Physics of Materials. Uh, uh, which is a um, uh, uh, a part of Czech Academy of Sciences. Um, namely, uh, the colleague is uh, his name is Tomasz Babinski. Uh, so, first to introduce you with the with the AM technology um, uh, which uses this type of material. So, uh, the FDM, the fused deposition modeling technology, uh, uses PLA material. So this is an extrusion-based technology where uh, the plastic material is melted through a nozzle and uh, dispensed onto a uh, build platform and in uh, consecutive layer by layer manner uh, movement of the of the nozzle the whole um, part uh, is printed. Uh, so uh, the material is in form of uh, a, a filament, a filament spool. It um, is guided through the, the, the heater block while it melts and uh, in a liquid state, okay, a viscous state, in a liquid state, sorry, it is dispensed uh, through a nozzle. Um, then uh, concerning the FDM uh, technology, the most used materials except uh, PLA is ABS, HIPS, PVA, PC material, each holding its advantages over, over the other. Uh, but um, uh, some materials, which are you know, mostly used, something like PLA, can um, also have um, some additions, like uh, the, the filament could be a combination of a few materials, it could have some added particles, yeah, so-called second phase particles, which are mostly used for the filament pigmentation. So when you have a filament with different colors, it's mostly due to, to second phase particle influence. Also, uh, the, the, the uh, FDM materials can have an addition of carbon or glass fibers, uh, which uh, as the manufacturers usually state, enhance mechanical properties of the material. But, um, because the material, the fibers are usually very short, like uh, 100 uh, micrometers or a bit longer. Uh, somehow it's disputable uh, how, uh, gre how great is the influence on mechanical properties when you have a addition of carbon and glass fibers in the, in the matrix polymer material. So concerning these two, uh, here you have some uh, stress strain graphs uh, of uh, PLA and PLAX material um, uh, of the conducted tensile tests. So we see here uh, in literature, PLA material is uh, called quasi brittle. So it has a, a large uh, uh, elastic zone with a small uh, plastic uh, deformation uh, before, before fracture. And this um, uh, different material, yes, so-called PLAX, uh, has a large uh, uh, plastic deformation when you compare it to, to so-called, okay, PLA material. So PLA is quasi-brittle and PLAX, as you see from the, from the uh, diagram uh, at the bottom of uh, this slide, uh, it's, it can be called as uh, ductile material. So uh, on the pictures to the right hand side, uh, the upper one are the fractured PLA specimens. They broke in brittle manner. And um, on the uh, uh, picture on the bottom side, you see that the so-called PLAX material um, uh, showed uh, some yielding mechanism in plastics is uh, called crazing. So before uh, eventual fracture, the material uh, performed such yielding mechanism. And that's how uh, you see these white, uh, uh, white regions on, the, on, the, on these black PLAX specimens that is due to that so-called crazing yielding mechanism. Uh, sorry. Uh, now, 
concerning our tests, we uh, used five uh, batches uh, of material. So they differ in uh, layer height, printing orientation, infill pattern, and uh, density. Also, the last uh, batch of, of material, um, uh, the, the, fi the filament was previously, pre before the 3D printing, it was dried to see uh, uh, that effect on, on, on eventual mechanical properties. So the first batch has 0.1 layer height with 50% infill density. Third, uh, second and third uh, are uh, full infill density batches, which differ in printing orientation. So one is rectilinear, the other is circular. Fourth had uh, higher layer height and the fifth uh, was of previously dried filament. So uh, all these properties combined, we can see uh, on this uh, um, uh, not many specimens, how each parameter uh, influences on mechanical properties. So these are the results of one uh, previous paper uh, showing the comparison between PLA and PLA. So on each chart, you see different mechanical property from, from left to right hand side, you have PLA and then uh, PLAX uh, batches, batch properties. Uh, what I want to, to emphasize is that the ultimate tensile strength is um, uh, greatest in the, in the batches holding uh, highest infill density, so with full infill, uh, with a slighter advantage, with slightly higher um, values in um, uh, circular orientation batch, mostly due to that, that the uh, printing lines were in the direction of the uh, of the loading, and that's why the, the forces were a bit higher. So uh, concerning fracture toughness tests, the, the continuation of that research uh, um, uh, uh, contains, so fracture toughness tests, uh, they were conducted according to ASTM D5045 standard for plane strain uh, fracture toughness assessment. So the tests were performed on SEMB specimens, so single edge notched bend specimens and the straining rate was set at five millimeter per minute constant. So fracture toughness is calculated according to formula. That's how we get the conditional KQ value after which that value must be, uh, must, um, uh, must, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, must, um, uh, be according to the plane strain uh, uh, criterion Indeed. in order for the conditional value to be uh, to be valid. Uh, of course, there are some formulas and how the the uh, fracture toughness is calculated. Also, you need to um, uh, have a uh, also cert a certain other uh, conditions which have to be met for the uh, test to be valid. Uh, the, uh, the SEMB specimens have a notch and the pre-crack was inserted using a hammer uh, tapping. Um, so the hammer, the um, razor was placed in the notch and above it, the hammer, um, you, uh, we applied, uh, you know, force uh, with the hammer, uh, creating a pre-crack on each uh, specimen. Uh, then, uh, according to this standard, um, uh, we needed three mandatory uh, specimens per batch, but we also had uh, two additional uh, specimens just for the replacement. The bulk dimension of the specimen is uh, 13 by 26 by 114.4 millimeters. The dimension of the notch is, uh, the, uh, the depth of the notch is 13 millimeters. Uh, sorry, uh, the notch length is 10 millimeters, its width is point, uh, 1.5 millimeters, and the full um, crack length is 13 millimeters. So notch length plus three millimeters uh, of the, of the pre-crack. Uh, here you see on the left-hand side the image of how the, the specimens were printed. They were all printed in this, uh, in this uh, manner, in this orientation. Then, um, Concerning the DIC cameras, we also um, uh, used a DIC camera uh, device with dedicated Aramis software uh, to see the full field uh, deformations on the front side of the SEMB 
specimens there, we uh, created some sections which act as like uh, virtual gorge, uh, gorge lanes. Uh, we could uh, monitor the deformations um, and see uh, how the, the crack uh, propagates or concerning how the material deforms when, when, when crack uh, propagates. Uh, so uh, on the middle uh, image, you see how the uh, how the whole laboratory set looked like. So uh, on the tensile test machine, we use it, used a three-point bending test uh, fixture for the SEMB specimens. Uh, we used the uh, controlled uh, strain rate, so five millimeters per minute, and the DAC device was in front to capture the front side of the of the specimens. All the specimens were painted for a better quality of the images on the uh, DAC um, uh, DAC software. Uh, so concerning fracture toughness uh, tests. Uh, PLA specimens uh, met the plain strain uh, uh, criterion, except the second batch, uh, which uh, had a bit higher forces than uh, than the, the the third batch, which had uh, high uh, forces because the it it is a, a full density um, specimen batch. So the um, uh, good values uh, ranged between 1.5 to uh, 3.3 uh, megapascal square root uh, meter. So for the um, uh, for the second batch, which uh, created greater forces, and that's why uh, the plane strain criterion is not met in that case. Uh, we, in future uh, studies, we will use uh, additional, much bigger specimens which have. Uh, the B, A, and W minus A value of more than uh, 26 millimeters. Here we used a 26 millimeter value as uh, the reference. And concerning the ductile PLAX material, none of the, of the specimens met the uh, plane strain criterion. Uh, the, the minimum value of, of B dimension is much higher and uh, creating such specimens uh, uh, is almost impossible for the machine, and of course, uh, the dimension of such specimen will not be, we cannot be placed in the in the tensile uh, testing machine. So, um, in the continuation of the research, we will use uh, the uh, J-integral uh, evaluation according to one particular uh, standard. I think the number is six zero eight six, but. Okay, uh, for this matter, just to show you the results, we can use the uh, COD parameter uh, values. Uh, so using the DAC camera, we, we can um, use point-point distance. And uh, with uh, such technique, we could um, see uh, the COD parameter. So the CMOD, as you see it on the picture uh, in the middle, uh, uh, yellow dots uh, show the far sides of the of the CMOD down and the CTOD uh, parameter. Um, also, uh, we have these results on the left hand side, uh, and um, we use the delta five. So uh, the starting uh, um, distance between the points was uh, five millimeters. So we use delta five. And here you see also that the high infill density uh, specimens had a greater value uh, than all the other uh, specimen batches. And uh, uh, that is how these uh, results look like on the left-hand side. So, okay, for the continuation, we will use the uh, J-integral uh, estimation. Now, uh, concerning the part of my uh, colleague, Tomasz Babinski from uh, Institute of Physics of Materials in Brno. He conducted the SEM uh, microscopy and attained uh, images of fracture surfaces of uh, these uh, specimens. From left-hand side to the right, you see how uh, the, pre the preparation uh, looked like. And on the far uh, right side, you see uh, how the specimens were placed in the, in the uh, SEM uh, microscope chamber. Uh, here we see some images of uh, PLA materials. So uh, you see labeled um, where is the notch of the specimen. So this is uh, the picture on the left hand side shows the uh, complete uh, surface uh, of the 
uh, of the specimen, uh, you see uh, labeled notch and pre-crack. Uh, it was okay placed with uh, with a, a razor blade, and that is how uh, this looks like. Um, uh, with the red line, you have limit. You have uh, bordered uh, the pre-crack length, and uh, after the pre-crack. To the right uh, hand side, you see uh, the images uh, of fractured surfaces. Uh, here you see some uh, uh, fractured um, printing lines, which fractured in, in brittle manner. But in the, uh, in the middle uh, section, you see some uh, plasticity. I will show you uh, in the following. So these are the images of the, uh, of the fractured uh, filament in the in the middle part of, of the specimen, from light left hand side to the right, you see a larger larger image, and then uh, zoomed images toward uh, right hand side. Uh, you see uh, on the on the image uh, to the far right uh, at the bottom uh, side of the of the slide, uh, you see some. Um, I mean, not like fibers, They're, those are uh, called uh, fibrils. So uh, when, um, uh, when a material uh, uh, goes to the, the plastic deformation and uh, creates some yielding mechanism in plastics, uh, usually it is crazing, uh, the um, uh, polymer uh, chains uh, group uh, with each other. So uh, the, the surrounding filaments just group into fibrils and between each fibrils of, uh, in that area, you have uh, empty spaces like, um, like voids. So uh, here, okay, on the, on the middle picture, uh, bottom, you see uh, how the fractured uh, fibrils look like. So that is the image uh, with uh, highest zoom. Then um, on the on the on the edges of um, uh, PLA uh, specimens, you see uh, how they uh, fractured in the in the brittle manner. So to the left uh, right hand side. Uh, you see the fractured surfaces, and this is how a uh, so-called quasi-brittle polymer uh, fracture surface looks like. Then concerning the, the, the PLAX material, uh, the same we applied uh, on that material also, but here you see some more fibrils um, in, in the material. You see that the, that the structure is a bit different than the, than the PLA material. Uh, we will research further to see uh, in full uh, what is the, 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 why is the, the PLAX material behaves in such a manner and why, why it creates such different um, fracture surface than PLA material, just that the uh, manufacturer uh, didn't give the, um, enough info about the PLAX material uh, structure. Uh, so it, they they hold that the material will behave uh, in, in in mechanical properties toward so, uh, ABS material, but uh, how they uh, conceived it uh, with PLA matrix uh, that we'll try to find in the in the following uh, research. Some more zoomed images here. You see uh, fibrils and voids more clearly on this PLA material uh, with, and uh, with such information, we can conclude that the uh, yielding mechanism and the whole plastic deformation was much greater in the, in the PLAX material than in uh, quasi-brittle PLA. Uh, then some other images of uh, fractured uh, uh, filament in the middle part of the, of the, of the specimen uh, and how as, as you, if you can remember the fractured surfaces from the PLA, it uh, has some more uh, plastic deformation than, than PLAs. Now concerning uh, force displacement diagrams, uh, as uh, the highest forces in tensile tests were um, present in, in full infill density batches, so uh, was the force displacement diagrams for fracture toughness tests also had highest uh, value, highest force values in uh, full infill density batches, but here uh, they uh, differ in uh, 
so they uh, switched places concerning the highest force. So in tensile tests, the, uh, the circular uh, orientation batch had highest forces here, the, the rectilinear all the greater forces, mostly due to the now uh, different nature of the load. So here we have flexural, fl uh, flexural text, uh, test, and the before one was a tensile test. Uh, so concerning the formation results, we've attained uh, Mises strain values uh, along the uh, created uh, sections. So sections are uh, about 45 millimeters in length. And the conclusion on, uh, on these five images, we show that uh, if you have less uh, uh, material infill, so less density inside the, the, the specimen, the crack will, uh, the propagating crack will, will uh, most probably follow uh, the expected dimension. So uh, on the uh, first batch image, you see uh, a, some, somehow a candle-like, um, uh, diagram, candle shape uh, diagram showing uh, that the highest deformation values were uh, on the pathway uh, of the expected uh, crack, uh, crack propagation. In other batches, ex especially in the, in the full infill density batches, we see some more like deformation values scatter on the left and on the right hand side uh, of the, of the uh, expected crack propagation path. So we are expecting a straight uh, crack propagating from uh, the point vertical down. And uh, in uh, one uh, 100 infill density uh, batch, we had some uh, local stress concentrator issues. So uh, on the path of the, of, the, of the propagating crack in its vicinity, we had um, a like sort of cracking in the material and it influenced in a, a following crack propagation in that way that the crack, uh, okay, use this, this pathway to the, to the already uh, freed surface and it goes uh, with an angulation of the, of the expected uh, good uh, crack path. Uh, with one section, uh, namely the red one, we captured the deformation uh, value uh, of that stress concentrator, and it is uh, shown on the far left uh, hand side uh, with an arrow. We see the, 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 the value of uh, the formation of that stress concentrator and how it all influenced on uh, force displacement diagrams. So uh, when uh, that local stress concentrator uh, influenced, uh, so when it, the two like uh, uh, printing lines just uh, delaminated, uh, it uh, sort of uh, changed the slope in force displacement diagram. Of course, this diagram, because you need a whole, whole straight, uh, straight line from the start to the maximum value, these uh, specimens uh, are not valid uh, for the fracture toughness uh, value estimation, but it is good to show how different uh, printing states can influence the material behavior. Same applies to the PLAX material, uh, highest force in full infill density batches. Also, circular has a bit higher forces than, uh, sorry, the rectilinear has a bit higher forces than circular due to, 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 to load nature. And also in uh, the formation results uh, show that in lower um, infill density, the expected, uh, the crack will most probably propagate uh, according to the expected. Uh, path and uh, the more material you have, there will be more deformation around uh, the propagating crack. The same applies. The same issue applies in the in this uh, ductile material, but uh, uh, the influence of the local stress concentrator may be due to the uh, ductile nature of the material was not so uh, evident as in uh, quasi brittle uh, PLA material. So to conclude. Uh, our research, so uh, the subject of, of, of our research uh, um, uh, obtained the, the, the material behavior of uh, regular PLA material uh, vastly used in the, in the FDM technology. And one, just one particular uh, 
uh, material with some additions uh, with which one manufacturer hoped to, to, to get some different mechanical properties and to, you know, um, have more uh, advantages and to put more advantages in the, in the created material. PLA is good because of the dimensional accuracy, but because of its brittle uh, frac uh, ma uh, manner, uh, brittle behavior, uh, it doesn't have many, uh, uh, many functional uh, applications. Uh, so we've seen how um, printing parameters uh, influenced uh, on, uh, uh, printing parameter influenced on the tensile uh, test results namely on uh, ultimate tensile strength and which parameters gave the best results in the continuation the uh, fracture toughness tests were uh, were uh, done uh, and also i've mentioned you the the, the conclusions of, of both materials so with using uh, tens um, uh, fracture toughness uh, results were attained using um, uh, tensile uh, test machine with three-point bending test fixture and with addition with CO with uh, DIC camera set uh, device uh, we could attain also the COD parameters which was which proved useful for the ductile material which couldn't hold the plane strain uh, criterion also we've shown you some uh, SEM uh, microscopy images uh, showing uh, the the fracture surfaces of both materials and how they differ and uh, uh, on this occasion, I'm uh, I'll, uh, uh, showing my uh, gratitude to, to our colleagues uh, on the CIRAM project uh, in which we are involved, namely the colleagues from the, from the uh, Institute of Physics in Brno. And in this case, uh, on this research, to thank the engineer, uh, Tomasz Babinski, for uh, nice work. Thank you.